What up guys, Victor here, and in today's Catch and Cook, we're doing a trash fish taste test with this guy right here. Now, if you guys have ever seen this fish and caught him before, you know they smell like absolute trash. When I say, I'm talking about like two week old garbage that's been rotting in the sun. For some reason, when you first catch them, they smell really bad, but I want to find out if the actual meat, if the fillets are if they taste as bad as they smell, because I don't think so. I know a lot of people think this is a de delicacy, so we're about to find out if the Toro Snapper is trash or treasure. Keep it. Man, they smell. Hold on. These fish right here are one of, some of the smelliest fish when you catch them, when you get them on the boat and they smell so bad. But they change their colors. Like, as soon as I got it in the boat, it was like completely white, and they're so orange, like red. Like, you can see them like changing colors. They're pretty cool, actually. Okay. So, guys, Brooke just caught this fish right here. And if you ever see this, this is a Toro. You catch these at night. They're on the reef. You catch a lot of these while you're tailing. And when I say these things smell like poop, they smell like trash. If there was a trash fish, it would be this just based on its smell. But, um... You guys let me know if you guys have ever eaten this. I probably will do a catch and cook in the future. I might do one with this. I don't know. I have a I have a Vietnamese friend, lady, and she loves these things. I, I always save them for when I catch them. Um, but they smell like complete garbage when you bring them on the boat. I don't know even how to describe it. It's like a bitter, like it smells like rat poison or something. It just smells very bad. They might be really good on the inside though. So like I said guys, this is that Toro Snapper. I don't even know if it's a snapper. I honestly did a bunch of research online and I could not find any information on it. There's very little to anything. There's barely any recipes. Um, I know they have fish around the world called an Alfonsi, correct me if I'm wrong. And I think those are a delicacy, but I really don't know that much about this fish. So if you guys know anything or have any links to cool, um, information please go ahead and comment below i didn't even find a size limit or anything on fwc but i'm pretty sure it is an unregulated species so let's begin by flaying it they're a cool looking fish and they got this giant eyeball but i mean most people throw them back because they smell so bad i've been reluctant to eat them all these years too because they just smell that bad to cut through. It'll be probably really easy to skin. This is what the filet looks like. And um, the actual filet of the fish, I'm smelling it right now and it doesn't smell. I think it's the skin. I don't know why the skin smells so bad, but it just smells, you just don't want to eat it. You would never think this is an edible fish based on the smell of the skin. But the filets look pretty damn good. And these guys can be a very big nuisance when you're snapper fishing. Um, we only caught one, but we have nights where we load up on these. We catch 15, 20, and I usually keep them because, like I said, I have a, um, a, a friend who loves these. Well, maybe I should ask her for a recipe, but I've never tempted to eat them. But this whole YouTube thing and the catch and cook game has inspired me to really just go get out of my comfort zone and just basically try every single fish we have because if someone's eating them they're more than likely good so this is what it looks like after it's filleted big old eyeball they got the body of a snapper their skin is like sandpaper it's kind of like shark skin almost And one thing about these fish is I dive the same reefs that we snapper fish a lot and I've never seen them during the day. We And I've never caught them during the day as well. I only see them at night, but I guess that's why they have those big old eyeballs. You could tell that they're probably, that they're probably a nocturnal species to let uh, enough light into those pupils so that way they can see at night. So far, everything is good. You got firm, fillets, not mushy, not smelly, barely any bloodline on this guy. Bloodlines are usually what make the uh, fish fishy and unappetizing too. They smell just like any other snapper fillet.
All right, guys, we are in the kitchen now. I'm going to warn you, you, this is going to be a completely different catch and cook than you guys are used to seeing from me as far as putting in a lot of time and effort into a recipe and coming up with something creative. Um, I just moved, my family just moved, so we have no countertop, nothing is really ready for cooking in this house so far. The main point of this video is to do a Toro taste test. Now, common thought and a lot of people think that Toro, including myself, I've never eaten one, were trash fish. And this is because when you catch them, they have a very foul odor to them. Even after they're dead on ice in the cooler, they just smell rank. They don't smell like they should be eaten. But I did it, go ahead and fillet it. Now I have two different fillets of fish. I have the Toro and I have a Porgy. Now, porgies are about as plain Jane, non-fishy, flaky, just all around uh, fish you'd give to someone who is terrified of eating fish. They wouldn't even know they're eating fish. It's, it just does, it doesn't smell at all. So I'm gonna do a little taste test comparison. I know which one's the difference, but my dad is in the other room, and when I go to feed it to him, I'm gonna see if he can tell the difference, and I wanna see which one he likes more. The one that supposedly tastes bad and is a trash fish, or the porgy, which is supposed to be this really good delicacy, um, high value food fish. So let's get to cooking. So now to keep our taste test fair, I think the best approach is to use, you know, as little seasoning as possible just to really taste the true nature of the fish. So all I'm gonna do is butter and I have the fillets right over here, and I'm gonna season them with garlic powder, as well as garlic salt, and then put some lime over it when it's done. Just very plain Jane seasonings, just to really taste the true nature of the fish. So this right here, this is the Toro, and then this side, this is the Porgy. And I just finished it off with a little bit of lime juice. Now my dad's gonna try the two different fish. I want you to try this side first. Take a bite out of that one. And he has no idea which is which. Okay, this one is good. Good? Mm -hmm. Okay, now try the other one. And then try to see if you can t tell a difference between the two. This one is a little better. <laughs> it, it, it's, that's, uh, that's the one that people don't like. That's the Toro. That's the one that people say mm. smell like trash. Mm. This one is better because this one is more mushy. Mushy, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So the Toro yeah. is what my dad preferred. That's the firmer yeah. fish, and the Porgy is yeah. on the right. Yeah, this one is better. What about is it more flavor? So you guys just saw the objective results of my dad, and take a look at my plate real quick. And you look. Let me focus in on the on the plate and the fish. I think it's focused. You try to tell me if you can tell the difference between the highly highly acclaimed Porgy and the Toro, because I don't think there is any. He even said that the texture of the Toro was a lot better. So I'm gonna go ahead and taste the Toro first. Going for one more bite. Texture is firm, not fishy whatsoever. Doesn't really have a distinct flavor of its own, kind of very plain, bland. Now let's go for the porgy. Porgy? I actually prefer the porgy texture a little bit more. I think the Toro was tough for how flaky it looks. The porgy, on the other hand, is very, very flaky. But I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of fishy. And now it did not have a piece next to the bloodline or anything. The porgy piece, if there was if you had to give this to two people and they didn't like a fishy tasting fish, it would be the porgy and not the toro. 
So the fish that smelled like absolute trash at the beginning of this video actually turned out to be the better of the two. That's the reason I like making these videos and the trash taste test. It's not for the clickbait guys. As being a YouTuber now and doing these catch and cooks, it's made me realize to question common thought, to question what you've been raised with. You know, when I was growing up, there was just like this pedestal of fish that you had to catch and had to eat. And it was all, um, you know, this is trash, that's trash, and you can only eat mahi, snapper, all this. Throw that all out the door. Throw everything you've known and go out and try and do it for yourself as I've been doing. I've tasted Blue Runners now, I've done the Toro, and I don't plan on stopping. I'm gonna go through every single so-called trash fish that there is out there and do a taste test for you guys. I'm not lying, this really did taste just fine as how plain it was. Like I said guys, question common thought. Don't be a follower, do not just go out and go do what everybody else says. Try for yourself, because you might end up liking it. And on a slow day of fishing, when you don't get your snapper, you don't get your snook, you don't get something that you you know, are seeking after, you might get a bycatch by of a trash fish that you m might think is trash, but it actually might be your dinner. So until that next video, guys. I'm never gonna settle, settle, I'm never